welcome to New Sphere of Business. My name is Ronald Hughes. This is the channel of Contact Ignition, a training company in Dublin, Ireland, around sales. Today I want to talk to you about the psychology of selling and how it affects you in your current working position today. But I'm also going to talk a little bit about something called NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and why that doesn't work as well as maybe people have become accustomed to thinking it does. But you know, let's start out with uh, the, the position, you know, the psychology of selling. Selling is the second oldest profession. And it's been around forever. And in fact, uh, selling as an art form uh, existed for a long time. But about 1900, a number of psychologists and psychology became, started becoming popular, and organizational psychology started becoming popular. And they started trying to classify what selling was. And the first book on sales was actually written in 1920 by a psychologist called E.K. Strong, who wrote a book called The Psychology of Selling. And what he did was he looked at salespeople who sold insurance, and he followed those people around. And what he determined was that that they all use a very similar process in their selling technique. And he decided that, that there was actually uh, a, a, a psychological foundation for these processes. The process went like this. It said that first, those salespeople who were successful opened with questions. They used those questions to identify needs. They used those needs uh, to match up with the features of the products that the salesperson was selling. So they matched up the features that they were selling with the customer's needs and demonstrated to them that there was a benefit in utilizing their services. They also did something called advantages. And what they did is, is they pointed out the feature of their product and they gave an advantage or a differential between what their product did and what another product did. This is a marketing methodology uh, so that the customer can identify their own needs. Finally, what they did is they presented their product's benefits, gave a price and asked for an order. Then there was an area called objection handling, which is when the customer had missed some sort of key benefit, they would go back in and structure a series of, of reestablishing questions. Uh, in, a, in another particular way about affirming the customer's interest all the way along the line to make sure that they actually had a true match with the customer's needs. The psychology of selling here was based around language and, and that was what Strong initially noted. Yet most of us uh, would imagine that that's pretty much the structure that everyone would have used all the way along the line. Most of us, when we think of the psychology of selling, what we're thinking about is the ability to maintain our motivation to, to continually go out and present in what can be a, a very soul-destroying position. Uh, sometimes uh, people don't agree with us. Sometimes people don't like us. And those things can be very difficult when your living is structured around people liking you and people agree. I want to go take a side step here and everything and talk about neuro linguistic programming. NLP. A lot of people seem to be believing in NLP these days. Luckily, the, the neuroscientists of the world uh, say it's bullshit. So I would say, in, in, a, in a limited idea, there, there are some things about that are, that are taught as NLP uh, that should be taught as communication. One that, that people do think in a way such that their positive thoughts and positive words tend to link together. And then when you start talking negatively, uh, those negative senses uh, send us to a place that's negative and we're far less likely to, to go and, and find it comfortable to listen to you. So it's an, it, it is important for you to understand a little bit about the thinking of the brain and how it classifies likes and dislikes. It also classifies around identity structure. And we'll talk more about identity structure at a later date. In the meantime, what we first need to understand is that there is a process to selling, that you also need to focus your attention on the customer. 
if you actually go out and start off by liking the customer, finding things about the customer that you admire, if you listen for things about the customer that you can enjoy, if you can laugh at their jokes, if you can find things about them that you find interesting, if you truly focus your attention on admiring the person that you're with in your sales presentation, you'll probably walk out with more orders than you would if you walk in uh, understanding that all you're going to do is try and flog this person a product. People catch the senses of the fact that you're either there for them or you're against them. One of our most innate skills is our ability to judge the difference between friend or foe. Think about that the next time you're in a sales presentation. Remember that it is being that friend uh, that will get you a lot further with your customers. My name is Ronald Hughes. The company is called Contact Ignition. We're located in Dublin, Ireland. And if you're interested in customer service training, management training, or in fact sales training, please do contact us. Thank you very much. Goodbye.